Welcome back everyone! In episode 3 of the Madagascar expedition, you saw our team travel through Ranomafana on a day hike in search of the largest chameleon species in the world. In today's episode, we're hiking up a mountain through a humid jungle in search of one of the most cryptic and hard to find reptiles. Friends, tonight is the second night herping walk we're doing in Ranomafana National Park. It is raining hard. The last time we were out and we saw the amphibians, yes, it rained a bit, it's a foggy night, but the water's coming down. The amphibians are calling at large and we are excited to see what we find. Tonight's mission is to find a Europlatus gecko. I have to find one. Wish me luck, give me a thumbs up. Hope that the team and I are gonna find them. Everybody wants to find a leaf-tailed gecko tonight, so hopefully it'll work out. But I'm sure we're gonna see, what is that? I'm sure we're gonna clearly find a bunch of amazing animals regardless. Let's follow that sound and see what that's all about. Okay, everybody. This is a loud contest that we're having with a Madagascar rain frog. As you heard before, it is raining and therefore we are finding the rain frogs. Patrick here was explaining to us that this time of year is when the rain frogs are gonna be coming to bodies of water and starting their reproductive cycle. It doesn't appear that there are any other rain frogs here yet, so he might be the first one here waiting to attract the females over. And he's doing a really good job. He's also attracting us over with his beauty and his call. Okay friends, we have our first clue to finding one of the target species tonight. Patrick just pointed out the Sanzinia Madagascariensis shed, which gets us very excited. This animal might be close by, we might find one tonight. Is it fresh? Or is it old? Or is it, can't you tell because it's been raining? I'm not sure. Because, because if that's fresh, I'm going cross country up there until I find it. Dun dun dun! And we never saw Dave again. <laughs> the forest here is just teeming with life. You have to analyze every little leaf. Not to mention most of the animals we're looking for are so cryptic, so you can easily miss them if you don't pay close attention. The hunt to find a leaf-tailed gecko continues. Everyone is analyzing every little leaf. Remember how well these animals camouflage. You could easily miss a satanic leaf-tailed gecko. The member of this genus known to be found here in abundance. Alec, how's it going, man? Pretty good. I'm in the jungle. In the jungles of Madagascar. Wow. Look at these vines. I know. It's a sample. Look at hammerhead one. Yeah. You're a basic, right? The safe there basically. Really? We're supposed to kill one so. I don't know if they're invasive here. Okay everybody, we don't take the chameleons for granted. We are appreciative of how many we've come across. But here we have again another Kaluma O'Shaughnessy male resting in the canopy, doing his night snooze. Take a look at this handsome lizard. My goodness, he looks incredible. We've seen a few of them already tonight. There's another huge one we're gonna take a look at, rather large size. And we're gonna continue our quest in hopes to find that Europlatus gecko. I know it's gonna happen. I know we can do this. Like I said, a lot of the Kaluma O'Shaughnessy out tonight. I wouldn't even be surprised if the reason they're sleeping with their heads down this way is so that they can collect the water that drips down. If you look closely, there's so many droplets of water on his mouth, all he has to do is open and close his mouth and he can stay hydrated. As the rain pours through the foliage and onto the chameleon's hydrophobic skin, it beads up and rolls down its body towards its face. There, it can be lapped up and consumed. Chameleons just keep coming, everybody. And in this case, we have a beautiful Kaluma crypticum, blue-footed chameleon. This is a male animal. You can see there, he has a little short horn on the tip of his nose. Sure, we can sort of tell there's a bit of a bulge, or hemipenal bulge. He's doing his thing sleeping there behind the foliage. You don't want to stress him out, but you can kind of see him better like that. All right, guys. He sounds so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be grateful here. I love chameleons. Finding a lot of those and not a lot of anything else tonight. We have a beautiful female Kaluma crypticum. We just saw a nice male 
frankly speaking, there's another one right over there that we can also look at resting. Uh, but yeah, she's just doing her thing schnoozing and I'm sure we'll find 10 more of them anytime soon. The perks of searching for a very cryptic and well camouflaged animal is that in the process, you're bound to find so many other fascinating species. A predator is on the hunt. This is the Ranomafana big-headed snake, Comsophis lafistius. This species' Latin name translates to glutinous because of its ravenous appetite. It moves across the mossy wall in search of amphibians and their spawns of eggs. Now the moth almost went up my shirt. The Madagascar expedition is brought to you by Exoterra. Make your reptiles feel at home. Whether it's beautifully designed terrariums for housing your animals, feeding and nutrition, products that nourish your pets and help them find their food easier, substrates and habitat decor that allow you to create the most beautiful naturalistic looking homes for your animals, heating, lighting, and more. Exoterra has a wide selection of innovative products that allow hobbyists to successfully keep their reptiles. Exoterra makes it possible to cater to almost any species from almost any specialized habitat. Thank you again to my friends at Exoterra for sponsoring the expedition of a lifetime. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, yeah, I forgot for a bit nine. Oh, that is, I forgot about that. Yeah, you got for that. I'm like, that kind of thing that I don't remember a lot. It's personal food. That's a room one. That's good, man. Damn it, man. Okay, my friend has said, want to buy yeah, some spice up on me, so you want to buy right vanilla yeah. or pepper. A local salesman who had already sold us some spices, vanilla pods and more came by because he knew I took a liking to insects. He was hoping I might also purchase some more spices, but instead I paid him to thank him for showing me so many cool animals. Breakfast was wrapping up and we were getting ready to head out. Today's adventure takes us on a very special hike. Can you tell me this isn't a phylodendron? This is not a phylodendron. Welcome back everyone, we're here in Rano Mafana National Park and we are looking for lemurs today, hoping to see several species. We're up very early this morning in hopes to arrive here on time because the lemurs have different hours that they're active and we wanted to make sure we're there to witness them before they go up into the canopy and sleep in the afternoon. So let's hope that we can see some incredible primates. Take a look guys, we found this enormous, beautiful snail. A lot of the other African giant land snails you'll see have a more cone-shaped shell. I'm not quite sure what species this is, but what a treat to see such a large mollusk. Gonna be washing my hands after this though, because sometimes they can carry different illnesses, and regardless of that, he is slimy. So, let's set them back down on the forest floor and continue our hike in search for lemurs. Part of herping and what you don't see in a lot of these videos is you almost become jaded. You get so lucky to find the same things over and over that we found a pimple nose chameleon a little while ago. And since then we found, I don't know, five, six, seven, every kilometer we walk. They're just absolutely everywhere. So you see these chameleons that are a bucket list thing for you to find one time. 
and then you find them over and over and over, it gets almost boring. And then you look at it six months later and realize, how cool is that? I think it's, yeah, it's the, the same snake that we saw last night. Of it's getting off a bus and finding community on the side of the road. A lot of it is hiking up mountains, extremely asthmatic, dehydrated, and underslept. How's the terrain, Mike? Oh, brings me right back to Costa Rica. What did I say? Miserable. <laughs> No one understands how, how hard this is. Our companions are feeling it. Mike, how you doing back there, bro? Awful. Awful? Okay, awful. Unfortunately slash fascinatingly, there are a lot of land leeches here. Not something we see back home. They're mostly aquatic, if not all in Canada. Gotta watch out for these little blood suckers. This guy will have to find a new host because I'm not interested. Let's keep going. You know what the great thing about herping is? You get a good workout too. You love it. You love to see it. Pick up the hustle, Diane. What is it? Ayo! Woo! Guess it's nothing. <laughs> We're going back down? Yeah, I know, right? <sighs> Protect the camera at all costs. Boy, were we getting quite the good workout, but let me tell you, these land leeches were starting to get on my nerves. As we caught up to the spot where Bill and Dave were at, they informed us that there were a few scientists studying some bamboo lemurs, but they had since retreated to their nest. Not really much to see, but it was cool to even just be below where they were, so we climbed all the way back up. Again, getting that workout in. Whew. Great work, Bill. Feeling good. species of lemur. Five at night, same moving the day. And that one, like a very famous animal because that is discovered here in the 986 means the science for the crest on this part only this uh, living in this area and this lemur is the uh, last uh, 30 years ago this life of this animal like and dangerous because it's have a more predator the first predator the fusa the after fusa the local people and the big uh, bird for the local people not to hunting just to catch for the bamboo and that this bamboo is to make a roof of house and something like that. This uh, food is not too much more. It's like a uh, loss. And then now this uh, population for the animals is to start to grow up. Last uh, 20 years ago, there is uh, have, uh, between that uh, 60. Now it's around that uh, 250 living in this area. Dave, how you doing good, sir? Dude, going through those jungles, breaking through those vines all the way uphill up a mountain that's a lot of work it is definitely a lot of work and i'm acclimated to about negative 11 celsius in snow right now not acclimated to this weather yet but man i wouldn't want to be any place else on earth Agreed. this is amazing 
How you, you doing, me, Mike? <laughs> you and me both. Actually, I mean, I feel like I've jumped in a swimming pool, but uh, beyond that, I feel okay. Like Dave said, <laughs> we're used to the frigid north. Adam, how you doing, buddy? Uh, good. No lemurs yet, but I'm gonna climb up a tree and put a fur coat on it if it makes it seem like it's a lemur so we can walk back down this mountain. Let's practice your call. Okay. Bow, 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 bow. Like that. Patrick, how's everything going? I'm just having fun to see you, uh, <laughs> how you uh, doing the adventure in Madagascar. It's totally different uh, as the country that you have seen before, but uh, I'm really happy that you still keep going. We're loving it, thank you. Okay, then. Yeah, Let's you're, continue. You're carrying us down, pal. <laughs> Bill, how you doing? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm doing great. All the wrong things. Nadim? What's up? How you doing? Good. Looking for that Lululemon sponsorship, so that's why I'm wearing the mask. <laughs> Very good. Sorry, Bill, were you going to add something there? Oh, no. I'm just having a great time walking through this... Uh... It's very humid forest. I'm glad it's a cool, humid forest. This is true. Yeah, because uh, nothing is evaporating. But uh, yeah, well, everybody's looking for lemurs. I'm down here looking for uh, Rickettsia or Europlatus. Same. I mean, I just want to see everything. <laughs> Alec, how are you holding up? Doing great. Fantastic. If anybody's going to do this, practice your steps. Lots of steps. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about filming this adventure? It's hot, yeah. it's tiring, but it's all worth it when I'm with these guys. And hey, what's your favorite animal been so far? <sighs> Probably Philoatus Philoatus. What about this guy? If uh, there's anyone you need to subscribe to, <laughs> it's Bill over here. I feel like I've jumped into a swimming pool and it's kind of accurate. 92% humidity right now and 69 degrees Fahrenheit or 21.1 degrees Celsius. It's a blast, but oh boy, this Canadian boy is not used to this heat. <laughs> I could crop spider. I own a video of me videoing. Epic fights. Okay, everyone, as we continue to make our climb, the elevation is resulting in cooler temperatures and the humidity level is super high. We're talking around 99%, I believe, and the temperatures are as low as 70 Fahrenheit. This is the environment conducive to finding Europlatus. This is their habitat. And one of the other target species I was so excited about hopefully finding on this hike is right here in front of me, the Brochesia superciliaris. This is also known as the brown leaf chameleon, the genus of Brookhizia. These are small little pygmy chameleons that can be found in these jungles in Madagascar. This animal is incredible. If you look closely, he has these rostral appendages over his head. The same sort of thing we saw with the Kaluma parsonii. These are used by the animals to attract their mates across the board with the chameleons. You can see that this animal is most likely male as it has the hemipenal bulge there in the base of the tail. And although it has a shortened tail, you can see that it is at the very least semi-prehensile. It will help the animal sort of cling to branches as it descends or climbs through the rainforest. One of the hardest things you might not consider when you're doing these kinds of trips and excursions is the fact that every single time you stop to film an animal, you're taking a risk that you'll miss something else. And that, folks, happened to me just now. While I was filming the Brochesia superciliaris, my comrades came across a very rare greater bamboo lemur. And coincidentally, what they informed me of is that she is the only greater bamboo lemur in this forest, that's very sad to hear. According to them, the research shows that they are following her closely in hopes to see that perhaps a male will show up. They wanna make sure she's protected and hopefully in the future there will be more of them. You can kinda of hope that 
fingers crossed where there's one animal there may be more but it's important to keep in mind every time you stop to film something you might miss something else because there are just so many animals here everywhere and you really have to be pick and choosy and think hard many of us are creators which means that every time we see something you're looking at a pretty lengthy wait we have a system that works well for going back and forth filming getting our close-ups and whatnot but it's something you don't really think about behind the scenes I thought I'd mention so lucky for me my good friends have some good footage of that animal and I'm able to share it with you and it works out just great but I'm kind of bummed I missed that hopefully I'll catch the next lemur all right everyone so we just came across the male Brochesia superciliaris now we get to see a female here Pretty awesome. Honestly, I think literally every species of chameleon we've come across, we found both male and female representation to show you sexual dimorphism and sexual dichromatism that these animals possess and show you. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, mud. Mineralis mineralis. Ooh, I forgot I have. Oh, hey. How you doing, Mike? So good, man. So we're almost at the viewpoint, and from the viewpoint, it's half an hour walk to the battle bus. Nice leisurely stroll through the park. All right, so uh, I opened my backpack, and apparently, I have, I have someone a leech. who wants to come with me. This is a leech. And I, I dread going back to my room, taking off my pants and seeing my legs. I, I may have more of these. We all may have more of these. I've already pulled five off me so far on this hike. So all right, wonderful. Check your socks, boys, because they they tuck themselves in around your ankles. I thought you were perfect. Oh, six, so this is where we went. Oh my goodness. Okay, everybody, finally. I mean, I shouldn't say finally because we have only been here a few days and we have seen so much. But after all the night hikes, we have come across the species that I was the most excited to see in Madagascar. You already know I used to keep and breed Europlatus and specifically the Fantasticus Satanic Leaf Tail Gecko, my favorite species in the genus. And we have come across this stunning male animal. I'm going to be completely honest. None of us would have seen it if it wasn't for our guide here in the national park. We've probably walked by dozens of these already, but thankfully one of our Ranomafana guides was sharp-eyed and noticed this animal. I don't even know how he saw it truly. I'm not gonna ask questions. Thank goodness he did because we may not have come across another one afterwards. We're gonna take a closer look at this guy here. He is absolutely gorgeous. Perfect representation of a male animal. You can see the pattern and coloration. If you're someone who keeps these, you can tell that they're conducive to a male's phenotypic color. Also, you can see the tail notching, which is primarily seen 
morphologically speaking in male animals. I have produced females that did have a little bit of tail notching, so I won't go ahead and say that it's an exclusive trait to the male sex. This guy is unreal, the most cryptic and beautiful, mysterious animal you can find here. It's just a true honor to be able to interact with an animal that emotionally means so much to me. This gecko has such a place in where I am today with the hobby, where I am with this channel and more. And it's hard not to be moved and almost feel emotional having the true blessing of seeing this gecko in the wild. I'm, I'm to be honest, yeah, I'm kind of feeling a bit emotional. It's just so, so special. And yeah, I, I don't know where to go from here. I, I just, yeah, I'm honored. I'm just honored. So now what we're going to do is give you guys some information that may prove to be valuable to keeping them in captivity. We want to replicate the wild situation as much as possible. The first thing we noticed about this guy is he was pretty high up into the branches. Most of us are probably housing these animals in no more than pairs in perhaps a 12 by 12 by 18 size terrarium or ideally maybe a 18 by 18 by 24 you may want to reconsider that. I think a lot of us may want to because the animal's found all the way up here. I'm six foot one. That's got to be at least eight or more feet off the ground probably. So consider that. They do like the height. Again, this is only one individual, but our guides have said that they're actually quite high up. Mike is going to come over here in a second and give us some accurate measurements of the temperature and humidity exactly where we found the animal as well as the substrate in hopes we can feel more accurate about incubating their eggs. Most of us that are keeping Europlatus already know the ideal temperatures, but again, getting that natural situation, getting the actual information where the animals are living is so special and, and very important. All right, so out in the path where the Fantasticus was found, it is currently 78% humidity and 25 degrees Celsius or 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, up where he was, wow. we're looking at over 80% humidity and 25 degrees Celsius or 76 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to have the most accurate data, you need several points to make kind of an average out of. And with only one individual found and only one patch of forest, it's not going to be a whole picture, but it definitely helps give you guys a good idea of what the fans are experiencing in the wild. Right now, the sun is coming out from behind the cloud, so it's actually going to be a perfect opportunity to see what the filtered light UV reading is going to be. So that's pretty filtered light. There's also less then filtered light and if we move kind of more into the sunshine maybe about here one two three three point seven three point eight and back into the shade again back down to pretty much zero you go under a leaf there you go. 0 0.1. Pretty interesting. Now Mike's also going to take some measurements of the substrate, the leaf litter down here, so we can get some idea of what temperature you might want to incubate your eggs at, assuming that these animals are going to be descending down into the forest floor, nestling under the foliage closer to the clay-based soil, it seems, that we're finding underneath all these bushes and long branches. 22 degrees, and we'll pick one other random spot here. Pretty consistent. 70 Fahrenheit. <laughs> I just want to take a quick moment to sincerely thank Dr. Mark D. Schertz, herpetologist and evolutionary biologist. Whenever there was any uncertainty regarding taxonomical classification of a species we came across, he was just a quick video call away to help us ID an animal. That's super cool. Yeah, by confirming that it has a black mucosa, we confirm this is indeed true fantastic. 
So what we are doing here is properly identifying the animal as a fantasticus. If it has a black buccal membrane or black throat, it is a fan. This at home for medicating. So, hi. Sorry, I just wanted to say thank you for contributing that for us to uh, make an effort to properly identify the fantasticus. It's my great pleasure, and you know, um, to to drop a plug not to something that I personally am involved in in any way, but you guys should be uploading all your observations to iNaturalist yes. of all the insects and herbs and everything that you see, so that we get a much better idea of where these things are found, because uh, that that data is. Super, super useful. And these kinds of diagnostic features, you know, looking at the inside of the mouth. When you find a frog, we need to have the frog flipped on its back, which you can do by gently inducing uh, tonic immobility, which is you just gently turn the animal onto its back and it usually will just lay there and have a photo of the actual underside of the frog because that is like, that's such an important feature or set of features to identify the species, especially in Mantellidae, the, the, the Madagascar frogs. Absolutely. So take a picture of a frog, take one from above, and then also take one from below. Oh, okay. We'll make every no, effort to think. After resting at the lookout point for a few more minutes, we made our way back down the mountain. Alright guys, so we just went all the way back up for the hike. Now we're going back down a hill because we've been told there might be a boa. So let's go see what there is. Like I said, it never ends, and that's a good thing. I'm gonna get back to looking in front of me though. Okay friends, this is unbelievable. What a beautiful animal. This is the Sanzinia madagascariensis. What a rare treat to see this beautiful snake. All around this property we've noticed there are a few free roaming chickens and maybe it's quite possible that she was lying waiting for them in case they'd sneak by and she could grab a big meal. Look at that pattern. Look at her face. Such a cool snake and I really really wish to be honest, that these were in the hobby in Canada, because I would love to own such a beautiful animal. After interacting with the Madagascar tree boa, it began to rain down hard, as it always does every few hours here in Ranomafana. But now, we're heading out to eat a very late local lunch, followed by an excursion that will lead to us finding one of Madagascar's most beautiful and endangered frogs. But that, my friends, will be something you'll have to wait till next episode to see.